Workshop topics, a very useful workshop tool. After a few days of plastering, painting and decorating, a small and very useful item arrived in the post. This is a review of the item showing it in operation. On one side of my house was a very ramshackle lean-to, but now it's been rebuilt into a much better version of the previous building. And here's what's inside it, my Hammond L102 organ, surrounded by various painting and decorating things. I keep this old Hammond L102 from a nostalgia point of view, because this was the model of Hammond organ used by Keith Emerson in a band called The Nice in the 1960s. And when I was young and impressionable, I went to one of the gigs and it changed my life. The reason for having this specially made building with a minimum of windows and a glass fibre roof is because I need more space. The quality of this new building was okay, but the builder was very messy. Look what he did to the door. And I've had to replaster part of it because the plastering was just diabolical. This door leads into the kitchen, and when I go through the door, there is more mess. This is the wall on the other side, and there's a problem with the paint, so I'm in the process of scraping it off. Basically, everything in the downstairs part of my house is a total mess. Not for long, though, I will soon get it organised. I've bought some of these, humane mouse traps. Currently, I don't have any mice. I bought these because I'm going to make a few videos about how to use humane mouse traps. This is a rechargeable battery powered Proxon MicroMot motor tool. And this is a picture of my internet router. And when I turn it over to look at the back of it, you can see that it is an internet router. It says BT on the front of it, which stands for British Telecom, and it is an internet router. In this box, on the other hand, is not an internet router. This is a router. It's an entirely different machine. This will not connect to the internet in any way. I have a lot of viewers from the USA, so to avoid confusion, I just wanted to clarify how in the UK we call some things routers and some other things routers. And again, this is a router. This video is about a router, and here's part of it. I wondered what the polystyrene block was. I pressed on it hard with my finger to remove it, and then I found out what it was. It's there to cover a spike. Here's the spike, which I've just pulled out of my finger. The purpose of this spike is so that you can route a circle. Luckily, I didn't damage my hands, and the bleeding soon stopped. These are my hands, and they are full of paint at the moment. This device is not a router in itself. It is a mounting for a Proxon MicroMot motor tool to convert it into a router. It's very well made and it wasn't expensive at all. I'd better explain why I need this small router. A series that I'm currently making called Building a Stuart Model Steam Plant needs a slot in the board to hide some wiring that goes from the generator to the lights. I have a small Proxon milling machine, so I looked at some of the cutters, but these are a bit on the small side. Necessity being the mother of invention, I actually turned down the shank of a larger milling cutter. The shank needs to be 3.1mm or 1 8 of an inch to fit in the collets. Normally I have a drill chuck fitted on this machine, and initially I fitted the milling cutter into this. Everything's looking a bit magnified, don't forget this MicroMot tool is a very small hand tool. Very small, very good quality, and I use it all the time for a variety of jobs. Here I'm clamping the drill in place in the router framework. I had a look online and I noticed that you can buy quite a lot of different bits for this machine. But at the moment I think this one will do the job. When I first put the drill into the framework it felt a bit loose. But when I tightened it up using the two knobs on the side, it was fine. Very rigid indeed for its size. Here I'm giving the unit a test run using this very rough piece of wood that I used to mount a steam pump on when I was working on it a while ago. And it's not ideal because the piece of wood that I'm resting the guide against is not very straight. And in any case, this happened. The cutter fell out of the chuck. So obviously a drill chuck is not going to do the job, I need to fit a proper collet. I thought it would be a good idea to try and keep the sawdust under control, so here I'm using the vacuum cleaner to clean it up. Owing to the slot drill falling out of the chuck, the slot that I made in the wood 
was not good at all, and certainly no good for the underside of the baseboard on a very high quality steam plant. In this clip I'm fitting the cutter that I turned down in the lathe into a collet, and once I tightened it up with a spanner it was very securely held. So this is test number two, and I'm going the opposite way to the first one, because this side of the piece of plywood is perfectly flat and smooth. I was surprised how easy it is to control this router frame. When I use the vacuum cleaner, it's looking a lot better. The first part though is not good, because I went in too deep and put too much pressure on it. Once I reduced the depth of the cut, then the slot was very good indeed. Here I've cleaned it up with some sandpaper, and now I'm going to cut it a little deeper and for a lot longer length. First of all though, I'm going to see how far I can push the boundary. This is far too deep a cut. I was also applying too much side pressure to make it cut, and then suddenly it stopped. The battery had been in this drill for quite a while and I hadn't recharged it, so I borrowed the battery out of my Proxon angle grinder and put this one in the charger, as you can see. The slot is now more than deep enough to hold these pieces of card. Flush with success, I'm now going to try it on the board that I originally made for this steam plant, which warped. It's like a banana. This is not a piece of plywood, I think it's pine. Lots of pieces of pine stuck together. And here, I'm really abusing this router. Once again, the cut is far too deep, and I'm putting quite a lot of side pressure on it to move it through the work. Now I know the limitations of the tool, I can use it properly. You can see how far the cutters stuck out in this clip. This is definitely not the way to use this tool, so I backed it off and cut a much shallower groove. I could feel by the amount of pressure that I was putting on the unit that it was quite happy cutting like this. I think this is about the limit of the depth for a successful cut. Some viewers may be thinking, why am I messing about with this? Why didn't I buy a proper router? The reason for that is, in the workshop I have a cupboard full of power tools that I never use. They're too big for the jobs that I do, and they just sit in the back of a cupboard. So I didn't want a router to become part of that club. Plus, the only job I can really think of doing with it is what I'm currently doing, cutting a slot in a baseboard to hide the wiring that's going to go in the slot. So this tool, with the specially modified cutter that I turned in the lathe, is fine. I don't have the space or facility for a woodworking department. My new extension that I've been painting is not going to be an extension to the workshop. It's going to be a storage area for the parts that customers leave with me for long periods of time. The workshop is not the best place to keep them because it isn't heated all the time. So I'll be able to put them in cupboards in my extension until the customers find the time to pick them up. I'll be able to use the extra space in the workshop to good effect. What I'm doing at the moment is going back and forth along this slot, and each time I just lower the cutter slightly. You can lower the cutter in two ways. You can either just slacken off the grip of the two hand wheels and push the drill deeper into the work against the pressure of the springs, or if you want to be more exacting, you can slacken off the clamps and turn the knurled wheel to lower the position of the cutter. After a while, I finished routing the slot, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, the bit at the left-hand side, where I took too deep a cut and put too much pressure on the machine, is horrible. But once I took multi-passes, increasing the amount of cut depth at each pass, you can see the effect, and it's fine. This slot is half a millimetre deep, which will be fine for holding the wires. But not on this baseboard, it's very warped. But it is in the right position relative to where the lights will be fitted on the proper baseboard. Although I don't currently have a need for it, I thought it would be a good idea to show the other guide in action. The spike is pushed into the wood, by finger pressure only, and after adjusting the depth of the cutter, I get a circular slot. Obviously, to the purest woodworkers out there, they won't be happy with this. It's not a proper router. It does what I want it to do. But I'm not complaining, this excellent, very small Proxon router frame, including postage, was only about £30 from a company called Hobbies.co.uk. 
Their website address is on screen and it's well worth a visit. They sell a lot of things. Personally, I am very happy with this product in every way. And that's about it from me. I'm going back to the painting. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.